Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for the uh, the unlocking of the Ajna Hub. They have an intro for us, so we'll start out with that and then we will get started. So thank you for being here in the Zoom in the Zoom room and then also on Facebook and also on YouTube. We're streaming in multiple places. So, Hello and welcome. Today we are unlocking the Ajna Hub and this is our eighth installment of the Thrive by Design series. So we've already been through the majority of the hubs in our body graph and we call them hubs uh, because they're gathering points and they're um, homes that have a thematic energy about them and the archetypes have a room in the home. So we call them hubs instead of centers, um, just because uh, we like being creative and <laughs> creating new names for things. Um, you'll also notice that with our work, we're very, um, we're very visual, um, visually inclined as well. Like we like to create an experience around these. So instead of just intellectually talking about the energies or the frequencies or the gates without really having anything to stimulate our visual appeal, right? Um, we created these archetypes to um, personify and give human qualities and characteristics to the archetypes. So within the hubs that we um, that we have created, we, we also have the archetypes and the archetypes have their own name, they have their own personality. And it's very much based on gene keys, human design, astrology, the I Ching, all of that information kind of put in a soup together, alchemized and then um, delivered. Uh, yeah, so uh, anything that you want to open up with or add about um, this, Bella? Yeah, I definitely feel like we are, we went through the whole body graph and now we are in the Ajna. And I know that this is part of our work that is so important with embodiment. And I just, you know, it feels like I want to go around and around again, this kind of spiral thing that, you know, we are, we're still in the root, we're still in the sacral, we're still, it's all about wholeness. So somehow to sit here and be in the Ashna, which is the mind, which in a way is kind of like what's been ruling the world for so long, it just feels important to say that it's about wholeness. So even if we're going into one center or these few archetypes that live in this center, it's all about the matrix, the wholeness of, of all of us. And, and I feel it's especially important for the Ajna because somehow we have given the Ajna or the, the logical mind um, our problem solving uh, machine so much power. And it is to see, you know, it's not only the logical reasoning there. We also have the creative, like we, we're going to see from the archetypes today that even just by looking at the center, there's a wholeness there that we are not always aware of in how we're using it. So that's, that's the lie for me. Yeah. Wonderful. We'll pull up, I'll pull up our slides. So today we're going to be unlocking the Ajna Hub. So this is the key for the Ajna Hub. 
uh, we we say that the Ajna Hub is about vision and brain balance, balance between the two hemispheres. It's also this area of conceptualization, ideas, bringing things down in, into form as well. So we'll see that this is the key that kind of represents it, um, putting the puzzle pieces together. Um, and the ideas actually come from the head center. So we're bringing down these ideas from, from the head center. So here's the um, Ajna Hub, and it's brought to you by the Inner Circle, and we've been doing this journey within the Inner Circle. So it's not just about these webinars that you see us doing monthly. Actually, after these webinars, we spend a week in the Inner Circle uh, embodying, working with these hubs and the archetypes that are within them. So we have an embodiment webinar that we do together to really bring us into the body and start practicing some things that are gonna help us call forth and activate these archetypes and the center in general. And we have a teaching that we do and we have chart readings that we normally stream. So you've seen the chart readings and we read people that are inside the inner circle. So this is the Ashnaha. Here we go. So like I mentioned before, it's about vision and brain balance. We're going we're gonna to see that um, this can also be representative of the third eye chakra. So we're going to get a lot of that third eye energy here as well. And like you saw in the intro video, we have the alchemist. And uh, this is gene key or gate 47. And the frequencies here move from oppression to transfiguration. And it's through the pathway of transmutation. Then we have the inventor archetype and the inventor archetype in the gene key frequencies, it moves from addiction to silence through the pathway of invention. And this is that like out of the box thinking. And the reason they're so inventive is they return over and over and over to something. And when you kind of like release that grip of the spiral, something new emerges and, and this inventive energy comes in. Then we have the philosopher archetype. Uh, this is also gene key four, and it moves from intolerance to forgiveness through the pathway of understanding. And then we have the idealist, the idealist archetype, um, the, free, the gene key frequencies move from obscurity to light through the pathway of idealism. And then the rebel archetype, this is gene key 43, moves from deafness to epiphany through the pathway of insight. And then we have the 17, which we call the discoverer. And the discoverer, the discoverer moves from opinion to omniscience through the pathway of farsightedness. And those are the one, two, three, four, five, six archetypes that live in the Ajna hub. Okay, so Bella, what direction shall we take in this unlocking today? Where do you feel the I energy flow? I feel it's flowing? important to understand with the archetypes that they care about different things. And that's what we spoke about in the throat center as well. The throat center that kind of goes everywhere. Uh, and here again, we have those three main things that we can, we can tie to the circuitry. So there are those archetypes that care about the collective process. Uh, mm -hmm. So the 17 and the 47, uh, the 11, the four, uh, and we have what's logical in that collective process, which is logical reasoning and what's abstract. So the 11, for example, is abstract. The four is logical. The 47 is abstract and the seven, 17 is logical. So the mm -hmm. way that they are going to reason is going to be either, you could say creative, uh, what is called right side brain, or it's going to be logical and left side brain. And then we have everything that's in the middle, which is individual, and it's actually going to be that inner pulse or, um, yeah, the pulse, the insight that just comes as an inner knowing. That's very different from the reasoning process that the other archetypes care about. So I feel that depending on what you have activated, you know, you're going to, you're going to know um, how your reasoning usually goes and then of course which we are going to go in more uh, next week is is it open or is it defined as a center because if it is defined that means you have a channel going to your ashna with one of the, these 
uh, six archetypes included, then that is really what you're here in a kind of narrow way to live out in the world, to, to express them through wherever it's going in your throat or wherever it's connecting to in the world. This is your narrow process that you're here to impact others with, and especially us with open uh, minds. When we are near you, we're going to feel that consistent way of processing, conceptualizing that you have. Um, and for me, for example, I only have the 11 twice in Neptune in an otherwise open, very completely open uh, Ajna. Uh, so for me, that archetype uh, is very important in how I kind of see the world, um, which in sometimes I feel is a little bit um, in friction with all of my logical um, circuitry. And I think, Ashley, for you, I mean, I'm kind of just going here without without having without having a direction, but finding the direction. You have a <laughs> lot of different gates in the center. It's open for you. And you have all these gates that are constantly pulling on you. And we know that in the Ashna Center, there is a potential for anxiety, uh, especially when we have hanging gates that are kind of looking for the other side. So you have what what is what do you have in an open Ashna? I have everything except the individual circuitry. So I have the 47, the four, the 11 and the 17. Yeah. So it's a blend of, of different, of different energies. And I don't have like, it's reaching for something it doesn't have. So it's in an open center. So my 47 is waiting for, you know, all the mental images and things to come down so I can piece them together and be like, oh, here's the puzzle. You know, and it's a, it's a visual thing. It's not like a logical thing. The four is a logical thing. I'm like, okay, okay, detective, give me all the pieces. We're going to find the truth together. You know, the 47 is like, yes, we will illuminate together. Let's find, let's, let's see the bigger picture of things together. And the four is like, yeah, I want the truth. I want to understand. I want to understand this. Um, and then the 17 is, is reaching for the 62, which we call the scientist and the, and the 17, just like the four is logical. It's like, it kind of goes just like your brain. It goes crisscross. Like your, your, your right brain is actually connected to the left hemisphere of your brain, of your brain and your right and your left eye is connected to the right hemisphere of your brain. So it kind of crisscrosses here. So logical, logical, abstract, abstract, like Bella was saying. So and I think here I just want to put in that what you and I are connecting through an electromagnetic is the 17 and the 62. So that's the logical side where I have the expression, the translation from the throat of looking at the details and being able to translate and, and make sense of them. And you actually have the 17 that is pointing down. So our our way together of conceptualizing is when we connect the 17 and the and the 62, which is, I believe, very much what we're doing with the synthesizing, with Unlock Your Design and the language that we have found as we are zooming in and out of those systems. Yeah. Yeah, there is that. I mean, because the 17, you have to have all the different perspectives when you get into when you get into opinion. It's like, I'm going to take what Richard says, and that is truth. That is it. But there's like there's what Richard says, there's what Ross says, there's the there's the I Ching, there's like all these different perspectives because they all add to the truth of what it is. Because, you know, like the 17 is also seeking the truth. It's all connected in the circuitry, right? And so the 17 is taking all of these perspectives and not being narrow-minded about one. And the 62 is also like detail-oriented. It's like, okay, we're going to name it. And that's what we're doing with the archetypes. We're naming them. And Bella's also organizing the copy with it. Like she's she does a lot of, almost all of the copy of the art. And we kind of have that whole thing, if you think about discerning the thing, I mean, the 58 and the 18, discerning discerning kind of what's off and how we can refine it. And then we have the, the rhythm and the and the collective in the five and the 15 that, that you have. Then I have the 31, the seven to kind of like speak it speak the direction to all of you that are here and then you know you could and then it kind of comes from the inspiration down from the 17 like it comes from the bottom and goes up that whole mm -hmm. that whole logical circuitry of kind of discerning the process refining the process translating the process touching the collective with the process and it's all on that logical side what is it we're looking at and how can we bring it to you in a way that makes sense mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So the, the way, I mean, I love what you're saying and everybody, you all can do this with, with yourself to know, like, how does your energy move? How does it flow? That's why we're teaching what we're teaching. That's why we're, we're bringing this information to you because it's not just about the frequency bands of the gene keys. It's like, Oh, I have this gate and, or this gene key and this gene key. It, you actually need the human design aspect of it because it tells you how does the energy flow? Do you have collective circuitry? Do you have tribal circuitry? And depending on like, you know, what you are made of is going to attribute to your personality. So, you know, like what, like the whole idea and concept of the self and the not self, how do you even know what the not self is? If you don't actually know who you are, we can extrapolate and try to figure out who we are, but this is like a map. It's like a, a genetic coding, a blueprint that says, this is who you are. This is how your energy works. And you can't, I mean, you can try to, to dispute it. And I know there's multiple layers of things. We're multidimensional, multifaceted. You can go into Sidril. You can go into all these different like Myers and Briggs, like all these different things that try and, and, and show you another piece of the puzzle of who you are, right? There's nothing wrong with any of those things. It's about taking it and not being solid and set on this is the, the one truth because we are malleable. We grow, we evolve. But what this shows us is what is defined in us? What are we contributing to the world? And what are we here to receive in? Because if you have the four, but you don't have, but you don't have the 63, you're going to attract people into that, especially if in your circ, if, if in your design, you are wanting to bridge something to the throat, or you're wanting to bridge a split. There's so many reasons why we attract the people we attract into our life. And that's why electromagnetics, you know, the science of the law of attraction, why are we attracting the people we attract? Why does the idealist attract to the comedian? Why does the discoverer attract the scientist? Why does the rebel attract the translator? The rebel attracts the translator because it has this intuitive, in, not intuitive, but this, this spontaneous insight and knowing. And the translator takes that knowing and translate it so that it can take that individual knowing and share it and spontaneously share it with others to be inspired by. Definitely. And again, I feel there is this permission slip. You know, sometimes I'm like, why, why do I have to care so much about that? And instead of making yourself wrong for what you care about, when you understand circuitry, you realize that it's there in you and that you're here to care about that. And it doesn't matter if your partner doesn't care about that. Your partner might be completely tribal and you're like, oh, support. It feels so sticky, like, oh, like, but, but you, mm -hmm. like, there is something else, your own process of, of your, like Ashley was saying, your own spontaneous knowing of kind of just being with God and with inspiration, having those insights. That's, that's what you live for. You're not here to make yourself wrong for that or your partner wrong or your business partner wrong. Like, it is about giving ourselves the the permission slip to be who we are and then we can use the map to understand ourselves better and like Ashley said it's not a fixed map that this is the only thing I am but when I see what the circuitry says what I care about I can I can build with that even like this is what this is what I care about this is what I'm here to express in the world this is what I'm here to share with the other this is how I'm here to dance with life and with you through through being human mm -hmm. I love the idea of the permission slip because we're, we are all conditioned and there may be people in your life that are very um, prescriptive where they're like, this is what matters. Yes, it is what matters to them. And everything that people are expressing and saying that they have the passion behind, it's like, let them have that. That is their, that is their opinion. When we're looking at the 17, we get fixed on opinion because we've made it mean something about us and we've made it solid as if this is my truth. And then it doesn't allow any other perspectives to come in. So the 17 can't cling so tightly to the opinion of things. It has to be farsighted. It has to look at and hold all perspectives. And then you can choose your preference. Then you can decide that this is what I've extrapolated. This is my truth, you know, but someone may arrive at a different, at a different opinion, at a different understanding. Um, yeah. And it's just interesting, like when Bella was talking about tribal circuitry as well, and, and maybe she doesn't have a lot of tribal circuitry in her. That's kind of how these conversate and talk to each other as well. The 11 is not going to have the same ideas or beliefs as the 17 is because they're in different circuitry. Right. One of like like the, if or they're not in different circuitry, they're in a different circuit. So if one of them is logical and one of them is abstract, then they're, they may not be able to communicate well to each other. So you're going to have to find a way to translate. 
And the Ajna is very, I mean, you can feel just the energy of us speaking about this. It's super mental. It's like very mental energy. And you can almost feel the, the gears and the cogs moving in the brain, trying to understand something, trying to extrapolate. Like with my open head Ajna and throat, I always have to be very conscious of how I'm communicating because it def, like when we're calling something and I can't help but become that. And I'm like, it's super mental up in here today. And that's why the mind is not an authority. We don't like the mind is none of the authorities. We have, you know, the emotional authority, the sacral authority, um, splenic authority, self-projected. Like we have all those, but nowhere is somebody going to be a mental authority. You can be a mental projector, but you're only using your mind to, to, to understand what you're taking in from the outside. What, you, what the environment is, is, is what you're receiving from the environment. And then you're understanding it and conceptualizing it and making your opinion and your ideas on it, right? But it's not an authority. It's just a tool. Your mind is a tool. <laughs> what about the frequency bands of the, of the center? Do we have them? Oh, no, I don't. I can, I'll, I can get them, but I don't. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it, it was in the email. If you want to look at it, and that's great. Let's see. What is everybody saying in the chat? Also, if you're following along, do you have a defined Ajna or an undefined Ajna? And what archetypes or numbers do you have in, in your center? I see a lot of a lot of people with the 43. Hmm. Let's see. Undefined 17, 11, and 24. Yeah. Undefined 43. What's interesting is um, with Bella talking about how she only has one, uh, one gate in the Ajna center, right? Then when her Ajna gets turned on or activated, this is her preferred way of processing. When I have the 47, the 4, the 11, and the 17, it's kind of a convoluted mishmash of energy. So it's like, it's not as distinct. Like people that have just the 43, that individual insight and that boom, the lightning strike, like, I know that's what's going to come out of your Ajna. I know. And, it, and it, whether it, if it's, if it's undefined, right, it's going to be, I know, but I actually don't know how to articulate my knowing. I just know because you're reaching for the 23 that's going to translate it. If you have the 43 and the 23, that's this individual insight and knowing that gets translated and communicating. And just because you have the 23 doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that you're an amazing communicator. It may be something that you are going to create a skill and, and master over time. It may be actually hard for you to express because, um, you may be shut down by your individual expression and knowing so much. So you feel that constriction, like you really need to be speaking to the right people. Otherwise that exp that individual expression and knowing is going to like be, be met with the wrong people. And you're going to just be like, I'm such a freak. Why does nobody like think like me? I'm going to just keep my thoughts to myself. And I want to bring in something here because I have the 11 with a million different ideas. So this is probably something we'll go into next week, but I want to spark a little bit of inspiration around it. So I can see in my case, so I have the 11 twice in Neptune and Neptune can veil things. It can kind of hide things from us. It can look like it's, it's kind of foggy and the 11 is the idealist. So it, it's, a, it's abstract it, and it can always kind of see what's possible. Uh, and I also and my motivation in human design is hope so you can and I also have a lot of six lines so you can see that mix of how my mind works it always goes to this 11 the idealist and even with the most horrible of the dark archetypes it's feel, still feel find some kind of way of being idealistic about it and, and how great it is and with the six line the same thing the idealism of the six lines and then a second color of hope in 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 my motivation like you know it can take me quite far out there and I think for all of us because remember motivation has to do with one decimal out from the line in our personality sun and earth so you're going to look at your personality sun and earth you're going to see the, the gate you're going to see the line and there is one more decimal and that's what we call the color it's going to be from color one to color six uh, and when you look at your motivation, this is how you're here to 
how you're here to be motivated, how your mind is here to kind of see things and get motivated. And we know that the mind often kind of clicks and it doesn't help us. So it's often in transference. And we did a, we did a, a masterclass, we can put that in the chat too, um, with this. And I feel it's extremely rich to look at what is your motivation and your transference and how does that how does that relate to the gates that are defined in your ajna, and especially, you know, together with the line of those activations. Do you have 43, 4 and 24? Are they all interest person lines or are they all in like first lines? And then if, if that's first line, is your motivation maybe then also first color? Well, then everything is going to be filtered through that first line, first color. Or is there kind of a, so I believe that could, that could possibly be something of, of our conversation if you are with us next week in intensive, because I don't, I don't know that we have done that before. We did, we did the motivation masterclass and we have looked at the Ashna, but somehow, how does your mind take in and what does it do with it? It's going to depend on your motivation and really the, the tone that the, the lines in those archetype gates are, are giving you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, um, what was the name of the masterclass we did? Was that the threshold one? Threshold, the courage to thrive. Yeah, that was threshold. Yeah. And it's I think it's like, two. it's like, yeah, it's one of the three days or something. Like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And it's like 11 bucks or something like that in the academy. So it's super affordable. We have so much information on the motivations. And I wasn't even putting that together with the motivations. What did you find that the frequency bands are for the Yes, so I love I love them. So we were saying that there can there is potential for anxiety in all these gates. They all have their specific anxiety. We'll go through that next week. What it is at the low level, it is a stuckness. So you are like the mind is holding on, and then there's anxiety. It's a stuckness, a contraction. Then at the gift frequency, we have an activity because the gift frequency is the human, and we're here to be on the human path and to be active. So for this center, it's thinking. So it goes from a stuck anxiety to the gift of thinking, but it's, it's active. It's never like, it's never relaxed. You know, the mind never stops. And then when we go to the acidic frequency, that's when it becomes receptive. It becomes passive. It's become beingness. So the highest frequency is awareness. So the, the contracted state, the shadow anxiety, the gift is thinking and the city is awareness. Mm. I love that. Awareness seems to like pull. So anxiety is this grasping or gripping like, oh, I need to find the answer or figure this out or be relieved of whatever the pressure is, because the head center is a pressure center, just like the root. And the head center is a pressure center of anxiety. So it's bringing it's it's bringing down the low levels of psychosis, doubt. And what's the other one? confusion psychosis doubt and confusion is bringing that and when you have that and that's what you're receiving you're like that causes a great deal of anxiety thinking you kind of have more of a more of an, a, a grasp or authority over it you don't feel as out of control right you you kind of are, are, are getting through things and awareness seems to be more like this objective observer where you have awareness of what's going on in your mind and even the anxiety that's present there, but you don't let it take you and grip you and spiral you and spin you out. It's like you can witness what your mind is doing. And oftentimes when people have defined head or Ajna, and I know we said we weren't going to get into this, but there's a lot of mental chatter. There's a lot of thinking. And even when you go into meditation, it can be quite hard to silence it. When you have an open Ajna, mind um head it you can kind of get into this blank space where nothing's really happening and for me anyways even when i go into meditation it's easy for me to get into that theta state and kind of zone out and be in nothingness and for for people that have constant chatter it's not about eliminating the chatter it's actually about observing it so that you're not participating in it you're like no thank you but you can see it happening Happening. you can maybe hear it like going and you're like I and it's so strange to watch your mind work to be an observer of your mind and I know that Ra talks about that a lot as well as 
observing the mind, <laughs> observing what it says and not being attached to its opinions, not being attached to the oppression it would say that it has from that. Oh, I'm so confused. I'm so oppressed by this confusion or the addiction and the looping that the 24 can get into the 24. And the I mean, even talking about these states, I feel my solar plexus just going like, <sighs> like crunching like oh my gosh the 24 gets into addictive repetitive loops it's returning so maybe it was wronged in the past and it's like it feels like shame around that it's like oh my gosh like like what did i do what did i do to make this person so mad at me and then it's like all right let me loop and and go over every single detail of this event to try to figure out like you know you get into this psychosis because you're trying to to, to the, it's a mis, it's a mystery to you. Why is this? Why did this happen to me? What is this about? And loop, 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 addictive tendencies. And that's why in the, in the inventor archetype, you see in the, um, in the painting that Lindsay Foy did for us, all sorts of different types of addictions can come into this because what we're trying to do is fucking numb ourselves from our crazy mind. <laughs> it's like, all right, candy, alcohol, drugs, all these things to help us escape what's happening and, and, and the oppressive thinking that we have. Then we have, and then we have the, for the philosopher um, intolerance. When you don't understand the other, you don't understand the situation, you don't understand yourself, you can't find the truth, you're in doubt, you're gonna be intolerant of other people. This is linked to the programming partner of the revolutionary, which is very reactive. So it can be this like push away intolerant energy and reactive explosive energy too. But when you take the time to understand yourself, to understand the other, that's where forgiveness can kind of like wash over everything. And the four is also afraid of chaos. That's kind of what the lot, all the logical is afraid of chaos. So that's mm -hmm. why they go into perfectionism or go into that one answer that nothing is actually really ever black or white, but that's what it wants to do. It's running away from it would you say that maybe in the logical circuitry there's a um there's a a want or desire for certainty like it's to find the truth and be like oh okay i can i can rest well or it's more than anything perfection because the logical circuitry the collective circuitry in the logical circuit is here to take us into the future in a pattern that works better than the pattern of the past so then it can become that very idealistic and say, you know, this is the right pattern and it wants to perfect the pattern. That's what it's here for. So there is definitely a risk for perfectionism and never, never having it being enough in that. So that's the thing. Forgiveness is forgiveness. But, you know, as, as even just in the gift frequency, understanding you can always have more. That's why I was saying the gift frequency is always active. It's doing, doing, doing. You can always have more understanding. But somehow with forgiveness, like it's the end point. You know, when we come to the when we come to the glimpse of the cytic frequency, there is no more doing. We're already there. We're already whole. And I feel, yeah, I definitely feel the the influence of that in both in both you and me, Ashley, with with logical. Like we were saying, we have the whole logical circuit. We don't have the we don't have the last one, the four and the sixty three, but everything else up up until that and maybe unlock your design is kind of like <laughs> you know that what creates that channel um, but it's so interesting what do we care about as you and I together yes that's what we care about then when you are with your husband or you know like you connect with somebody else we were speaking about your the other par partner that you were with before a few years ago you and Ali like it's a completely different dynamic mm -hmm. so it's yeah I yeah it's 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 actually I'm going to I'm going to stop screen sharing so that we can actually just have a conversation. Um, it's beautiful and it's fascinating what we what is possible when we just allow the connections to form and not make things so mental and logical and like try to figure it out. It's like, can you surrender to the relationship? Can you surrender to it? Because like we we create a dynamic between us through our electromagnetics, like you were saying. And then, like you said, in other relationships, we're going to have a completely different experience. So can you surrender to the experience without labeling it as good and bad? Just be like, this is how I choose to show up. Our mind would, our mind likes to find the thing that's wrong because it wants to protect us from death. It wants to protect us. It's, it's, it's fear-based. The mind is, you have to actually 
work to program it to to have different belief sets, but we are hardwired to survive. And so the mind's only job is to make sure we don't die. So that's what it's that's what's processing inside of the mind, you know, but the other parts of us would have a different would have a different experience. And it's about using the mind, like we said, as a tool and what's happening in there, not making it solid and set and and not making decisions based on what you've come to. I know that for, for my husband, he's a self-projected projector and he thinks about things so much, but he has an open head and Ajna. And the reason it comes in is like, I know that he has the confusion. He has confusion. No, he has doubt. He has the 60, the 63. And so he wants to arrive at certainty. He's like, I, I need to be certain that I'm moving forward in the right way. And then when he gets to it, he's so, he's so solid on it. He's like, I've thought about it so much. How can it be wrong? I'm like, because you thought about it so much because you made it a mental process. Um, I don't know. Surrendering to relationships, surrendering to life, using the mind as a tool instead of the authority, I think is the biggest, the biggest takeaway. Um, Lots of people commenting about their motivation too, that I'm seeing. Yeah, I wanted to bring in here because what you said kind of stuck with me when you're saying, you know, it's what's keeping us alive. And then I'm thinking about the whole, like the trivium being that we're becoming and I'm thinking about our three awareness centers. So we have the, the splenic awareness, the instinctive awareness, which is the more animalistic awareness in the spleen. And often that's what we think about with survival. But then somehow on a low frequency, at least, I think it's going in all the awareness centers. So somehow here, when we have the anxieties of the, of the Ajna, I mean, this is what made us evolve and survive as, as human beings. So there is this there, there is this fear of dying there too. And then what does that even mean when we translate it into the newest awareness centers, which is the emotional awareness, which is where there's a lot of purification now. And I just know you and me actually looking at our relationships this past year, like we can see how much purification it is with, with everything, all the shadow frequencies that we have in the emotional center. And I'm wondering, you know, how is that even connecting with our fear? Like sometimes a, an emotion, excruciating emotional pain can definitely feel like dying. So there is something in the awareness center that's very connected to this fear of dying, whether it's a literal death or some other kind of death. And I, I don't know, like I, you know, I guess that I'm so tired of just be speaking about the same thing all the time of the gates or the archetypes. So I need to kind of bring in like today for me, the key word is wholeness. You know, mm-hmm. how can we look at this in a holistic way? How can we understand how the spleen, the, the ajna and the emotional center are becoming this compass for our human awareness as it's evolving? Like these kinds of things feel even more interesting than to be stuck in explaining exactly what the four is and how it's different from some other gate in the ajna. Mm-hmm. And it's about starting to understand, you know, how awareness works. And where it comes from and mm-hmm. and how we move with it and yeah yeah and i like this i like this direction there's and there's something about having res, like respect and, and and appreciation for the for the mind and the brain because think about it if you didn't have it you would be a vegetable there's so many things the brain is responsible for and there's so many processes there that are so automatic and you're not doing it like breathing it just happens you know the functions of your organs it just happens the brain is amazing it's an amazing tool and and when we get to dive into you know the gene keys and our programming and all of that stuff we get to rewire the brain and it's not that the brain is the authority of us it's that like when you come into awareness and you have awareness of like you know your motherboard and the programming that you, your supercomputer has you as a creator god get to be like all right that belief doesn't serve me anymore so i'm going to rewrite a new code and that's what's awesome about this is like you can literally transform the way that your your body processes things, processes things too. I remember, I remember um, a while back, like working with like my my skin issues and thinking like, man, why I'm like 25, 20 something years old and I still suffer from acne. Like, what is this from? And I like really dug deep into it because I wanted to understand it. And I was like, 
wow, it's, it's this alchemy. It's this transmutation that's happening. Things coming to the surface. It's literally the things inside of me coming to the surface. And I like went through this massive breakout because of my awakening and because my awareness opened up. And since my awareness opened up, I was processing so much stuff that was deep, deep down inside of me. So it was coming out. And at one point I was like, is there a more efficient way for getting out what's inside of me? And I was like, just playing with that and toying with that idea. I was like, what if it came out through, you know, going to the bathroom? Like what other ways can, can I like, like teach myself or train myself? And it's like, all I had to do was decide and it's things started to shift and I started to get new tools. But when it was like, I only had what my body was capable of, it just came out in like breakouts. And so I'm like, oh, I'm processing something. And now because I have more tools, I know how to process things, you know, with, with, with movement, breath, with sound, with just like setting the intention that I'm going to release it. I'm going to let it go. It doesn't need to come to a head. I can get it before it comes to a head because you have more awareness. So I don't know why I'm bringing I'm bringing that up, but it felt like popping you know in. That there is something we were speaking about the throat center as manifestation last month. Like that's really what that center was for. And at the same time, you know, I do believe that when the mind conceptualizes, that's also when it crystallizes and it becomes reality, you know, and there, there are more things we're going to speak about the personality crystal, the design crystal, you know, because now we're coming into kind of the makeup of, of our mechanics, like really when we, in the moment that we come in as a, as a human design, we have the design crystal, the personality crystal, we are in the head in the ashna where they reside, we have been in the G, which also has to do with that magnetic monopole, which makes us, which makes us kind of separate in that illusion of being who we are, we, we are really deep into mechanics and maybe that's the, the, even one of the more, more interesting and important parts here too, to understand the soul, soul and understand consciousness, awareness on, a, on an individual level and, and a collective level. So definitely, actually, I think there is something here as, in a way, as we think it, so we become it. As we think it, so we say it, and then it's, it's manifestation. And that's, mm -hmm. that's very, very powerful. There was one thing in the chat that I wanted to comment on. So somebody was speaking about the left, like, does it matter if you have left brain or right brain? Well, the whole thing is, again, wholeness. We both are left brain and right brain. And we have been wired to use our left brain more because that's how the school system and everything is set up. So important for us to have both. I do believe that we can see if you have a lot of abstract, I think these people are artistic. Like I know people that I, you know, for a fact, where they might even be left-handed when they write and then you know if you have somebody with a with a 63 4 like they are going to be logical like this is the beauty of this too you know and if they aren't you are they don't have to leave, even have you know have gone to school or anything it's just going to be there in the way they, they're going to have found some other details to understand and and you know it's but that for me is so cool i'm like i can i can i can feel that in somebody right away if they have the 64 and the and the four and I guess Richard Rudd must have both. I think he has both 63 and four, and then on the other side, the 64 and the 47, if I remember right. So mm -hmm. what, a, what a perfect way of conceptualizing and be able to bring in the gene keys that actually are aiming at least to have that balance between right brain, left brain, brain feminine, masculine, yin and yang. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we the themes of the center, we said vision and brain balance. And it's not about like, like, like being, like being, like, it's about balancing the right and left hemispheres of the brain. It's about being able to interact between both. And just because you have like more of that logical circuitry and not abstract, it doesn't mean you can't like balance it and bring in, like, just because it's not, doesn't come naturally to you doesn't mean you can't balance it. And actually you can balance your brain through so many different ways. And, and like, just by going like this, <laughs> balances the brain it's like do it do it do it with the bella do it <laughs> everybody do it yeah it balances the brain and you can even use your tongue to see how balanced your brain is like can you take your tongue and stick it out and like does it go to one side or can you do the like that like there's so many like when you stick your tongue out can you make it like i don't know maybe we'll do that in the embodiment exercise a little bit too because there's so many things that you can like see to be like oh I'm kind of leaning this way or that way like you can see 
based on your posture as well. If you, if you are you know, oriented more to the left or to the right, even the eyes, I think with the 11 and the 17, you know, yes. most of us have one eye that is higher and that one that's lower or bigger or smaller. And that also shows which side of you is more closed down, which side is overdeveloped. It's super accurate usually. Yeah. Like I can only, I can only, I can only raise my my left eyebrow. I can't raise, I can't, I can't raise my right eyebrow. Which one is linked to that side? Because when you're looking at the body graph, what's the right and what's the left? How do we discern that? Like, are I you would looking- say that uh, exactly, it's a little bit weird, but definitely where the emotional center is, it's the abstract and the feminine and where you have the, the spleen and the, like where you have the 16, 40, 48, that is logical, right? But then on the other mm-hmm. side, where you have the 35 and the 36, that is just you know that's the sen- like that's um yeah that's the the felt life so mm-hmm. and sometimes i feel wrong sometimes i really feel like the other side is where where all the emotion come in so i i mean somehow we need to understand that this is just a map like we can't the map is not a, a million percent 100 percent true it's just a map and the more we believe it's 100 percent true the more i think it's going to show us that it's skewed you know, and, and we, when we trust it completely, it's going to show us that it's cute. When we look at it as a model, it's going to give us the possibility to just discover more through it and to kind mm-hmm. of fill in the gaps because we're not attached to it. Again, like the Ashna is not saying this is the only truth that exists. Yeah. And, and just like, like Richard, Richard is, is a conduit or a channel for this information. So is raw. So are you. And we're all looking, it's almost like we're looking at the same thing and Richard and Ra are getting some perspectives and you're getting some perspectives and you're getting some things that Richard doesn't get. So whenever whenever we're, we're talking to somebody or, or when we're talking about channeling or when we were even working with Simone and she was doing soul communication, I was like, everyone can do this. You just literally, you plug in and you're receiving through your openness. Like Richard brings in, like if Richard has a defined head in Ajna, which I think you were alluding to because he has those, those channels. If he has a defined head in Ajna, then he's not receiving through here. He's processing through his, 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 his fixed, consistent mental energy. He's receiving through other things. And he has nothing in his G. So somehow it all is coming in through the heart and then it's becoming translated. And that was the, the he becomes He becomes the archetype. Sometimes because I've heard him talk about like doing um, psychedelics and stuff. I was like, I wonder if Richard like channeled the archetype through psychedelics. And he was like, all right. I'm going to become 42. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> okay, death, let's experience this or what, or endings or whatever it is. So I don't know. It's interesting because we all find a way of processing this stuff. Like Bella and I have our own way of processing and bringing in the archetypes, you know, and, um, and translating them. And that's what you're doing too. Like we're all, we're all different expressions of the same thing. Like we all are a source. Like Bella mentioned like wholeness and totality right? We all come from the same source. It's just, what is your filter? What is being expressed out of you? And you're getting to know that filter because that's your personality. That's you. But we are all God having a a human experience. And it's like, how does life want to live through you? You know, and surrendering to that. It's cool. (sighs) Well, did anyone have any questions that they wanted to put in the chat? Um, not in the chat, but in the Q&A. Because I think that we're wrapping up in a little bit. It, it feels... Yeah, and I energy, guess, I mean, yeah. there, all the questions that I asked, like, what's the difference between open and defined? And, you know, what's the physiological? I mean, this is super interesting in terms of the physiology, but all that will have time to in an organized way. So I think that, you know, I like today because before it felt like we were sometimes doing the same thing three times because we would have the opening call and go kind of, you know, in in the theory of it. And then in the embodiment call, in order for people to kind of feel safe, we would go into the same thing. And then in the teaching, we were going to go into the same thing. So I feel like today was more of a conversation when was alive, which is kind of our signature too, when we come in and do things. And then we're going to have the possibility to go in a more organized way, whether it's through the body and through that, through the understanding or through diving into the charts. We also do chart readings next week. So I mean, I guess for me, this is a way of also extending the invitation to come into the inner circle, $22, and then Mm -hmm. be with us for a month and just kind of 
eat what's there and see if you like it in one day. <laughs> eat what's there. Exactly. Yeah. So if you, if you would like to join the inner circle, cause we will be going in, like Bella mentioned, we're going to be going into the Ajna, having that embodiment. We have a Facebook community for the inner circle. We have an Academy portal where all of the replays and all the information is going to be there. We actually still have, we still have the throat hub. I will be taking it down. So if you are in the inner circle, like make sure, make sure you get through that material because by the end of the day today, I'm going to be taking it down. Uh, we have discussion prompts that we have within the Facebook group, the embodiment webinar, like we mentioned, the hub teaching webinar, the embodiment webinar is more of a meeting. So we'll all be on camera together doing stuff together. And then we have chart readings and anything else that comes up. So um, it's going to start uh, next week. June 20th through the 24th, we'll have the Ajna Hub Intensive inside the Inner Circle. And the Academy looks like this, where you're going to have all of the resources. This was from our Splenic Hub. Um, unlocking, this video will be up in there, the unlocking of the Ajna, and then anything else we add to that. So definitely, if you feel called to join the Inner Circle, um, we'd love to have you. Uh, if you want to join, you can get $22 off your first month, making it $22 this month. If you use the code community at checkout and um, we hope to see you inside, uh, you can find that through going to bit.ly slash UID dash IC. That's going to take you to the inner circle page um, where you can sign up. So I, I mean, just reflecting on, on where we've been, this feels like this is more of our style. Like Bella said, it's like we're gathering what's alive in the field and it's also informing us for next week. So depending on who is in the inner circle, it definitely impacts and influences what comes through because Bella and I are always reading into the, into the energy, into the life force, into what's alive. So if you are there, you are contri a, a contributing factor to it. And depending on what discussions and what things come up inside of the Facebook group and inside of our discussions, that's going to also impact what we bring through and what we decide to, to teach or, or, or model or bring in certain embodiment at activities for it. So, um, yeah. Was there any question to go into this one? Oh yeah, well, okay, so there is a question about the wide open. Definitely when we speak about the, the undefined, we'll go into what it means to have it completely wide open with nothing. That's super important, specifically for this center. So, I mean, if you, if you have a completely open, come next week, because it's going to be so important for you to understand the defined as well, because you're constantly flooded. I mean, I can, I can tell you for sure that my biggest lessons in life are the it's the functioning of the ego and the emotional i have nothing there it's really what i'm filtering in every in every moment so if you have nothing your ajna come and, and learn about it it's it's, it's going to help you to to be able to discern in your life you know where you where you put your aware like where yeah what you're filling your awareness with and where you're using your energy mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think too, I did something on the brain when we were in the Splenic Hub, which all this reminds me of. I feel like I kind of want to get more into the brain chemistry and the brain, um, the way that the brain works uh, because it's so fascinating. So I'm going to grab that video and I'll stick it in the inner circle for you guys. It just talks about like the what you focus on expands and what you focus on is what you're collecting. It's like the detective that says, all right, we're going to figure this out. And then your brain is like, sort through all the other stuff. We're not letting it in. Only the stuff that has to do with this is coming in because you can't have unlimited awareness where you're taking in everything. So your brain is the filter. So you get to discern and decide what you focus on expands. The abracadabra is like, I speak it, I create it. It's like, I think it, I am it. I, that is how I perceive. So you have the ability in this center to change your whole perception of your reality of your world. So this is one of the most important centers, even though it's not an authority, you can change your reality based on your, your perspective of things. You can be in hell right now and heaven in the same moment. So if you wanna join the inner circle, come with us, <laughs> come with us. Thanks for posting that masterclass as well. If you can post it in the, and Bella posted the threshold masterclass that in, included the, the motivations. So I don't, do you feel like you want, are you muted? 
muted. Yeah, I was Wait. saying, are we are we behind closed doors giving somebody a free month from the webinar? Or are we doing it like for everybody? I mean, I guess it's not a it's not a secret. So we could just we could just choose somebody that gets to come in with us. Yeah, let's just choose someone. Um, how are we going to do that? Yeah, we're not going to go behind closed doors and do a Q and A because there's not a lot of Q and A questions. So if you are in the Zoom the Zoom room with us and you're not part of the inner circle, please put your name in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. I also feel if you want to donate the inner circle to somebody that you know, you can put their name in the chat. I don't know why I said that, but that's what I feel. Yay. We're just waiting for people to put their name in the chat. One, two, Twelve. Okay. JLo, are you still on? JLo, pick a number between one and twelve. No, more than 13. One and 13. Oh, never mind. Seven. Okay. We're good. Let's see who wins. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, interesting. So um, Renee, which is not, how do you say this? Sternstead. Sternstead. Is that yeah, German? Yeah, it's like Norwegian or it could be Swedish, but old Swedish or Norwegian. And it will be Sternstedt <laughs> in Swedish. Ooh. So it's Swedish. Yes. So you said Renee. Who's Renee? I knew I felt somebody that was in. Yeah. Who's Renee? Renee wins. Renee is the wiener of the inner circle, the free month of the inner circle. Hopefully you can make a connection between us and Renee since that was the name you put in no, there. No, but maybe it is Renee. Maybe that's her first name and her oh. last name is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's the family name. Yeah. So it is Renee. Okay, well, please reach out to us, me or Bella or unlock your design so that you can claim your, yes, her name is, or her, his or her name. I don't even know. Her, it's her, her. It's her. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> I, I'm in other, other languages just like baffle me. Like, I don't know. Yes, thank you so much, Renee. And we are excited to have you join us in the inner circle. And thank you for everybody that watched the unlocking of the Ajna Hub. We're going to get into um, a more focused intensive next week. We're going to have things planned for the embodiment. We're going to have more focused and intentional teaching as well. Um, and the inner circle is open if you desire. And chart so readings. If you're in the inner circle, you also can submit your charts so that we go into them we usually do like three four in an hour so there's a lot of things that can come out in that time when we look both at the same chart so that's mm -hmm. uh, exciting too yes well thank you for joining us and we will see you next week Bye. Bye.